This is the new Zenbook 15 Pro, and it's a laptop I've been waiting to come out for a while now. It gets rid of the old Intel CPUs and adds AMD CPUs into the mix. So today, we're gonna check it out. The ASUS Zenbook line is essentially their answer to Dell's XPS line, a thin light set of laptops that are really designed for creators to offer good performance, not top end gaming performance, but good performance, particularly for editing photos, video, that sort of thing with really slim and lightweight chassis, good battery life and excellent screens. Now this laptop was announced last year and I believe it was supposed to come out originally last year, but because of chip shortages, et cetera, like many items, it was delayed. And now we're just getting it this year. So you have last year's 5900HX processor with 16 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte SSD, 3050 Ti for graphics and an OLED screen. Coming in at 0.71 inches thick and 4.41 pounds, it's not quite an ultra portable, but it is very thin and light. Now with the Zenbook Pro line, you always get a nice premium chassis and this is no different. The entire laptop is made of aluminum and everywhere you touch feels really solid. Like a lot of ASUS laptops, the top features this circular sort of swirl pattern with the offset ASUS logo, which I think looks really great. The only thing you'll wanna be aware of is that it does pick up fingerprints pretty easily. The layout of the laptop is very simple with everything either sitting on the left or right side. On the right side of the laptop, you have a USB 3.0 port, an HDMI 2.0 port. You can see the ventilation for the exhaust there. It doesn't come out the back, it comes out both sides. And you also have a full-size SD card reader, which is nice. So it's UHS class two speeds, which are decent. And on the left side, you have one USB-C port, not Thunderbolt because it does have an AMD CPU, but it is 3.2 Gen 2, so it is pretty fast. You should be able to power docks, all that fun stuff. You have a headphone jack, again, more ventilation for your fans, and then the power plug for your power adapter. So if you're the type of person that needs to plug in a ton of peripherals, you need everything plugged in at one time, this might not be the best laptop for you, but you could certainly get a USB-C dock and plug your stuff in that way. Another thing to note, the USB-C port does not take power. It does not do power delivery. So you have to carry around your power adapter, even though you might not need to, and we'll touch on why later. The hinge used here is very sturdy, but it also means you have to use two hands to open the laptop. I know some of you hate that. Doesn't bother me at all. It's very nicely built. You'll see immediately the full size keyboard layout inside. You've got a full keyboard with arrow keys separated out and also a full number pad. Now, a lot of you don't like this. I personally do. I think it's great for productivity, but to each their own. You have a generously sized touchpad. It's not as big as some of the competitors and it's not as big as it should be. They could definitely make it a little bit wider and a little bit taller. And I hope to see that in future models, but it's perfectly fine, it's big enough, it's glass, it's smooth, and it's a good surface. In the function row, you also find a button to control the three-stage backlight on the keyboard. It's a really strong backlight, one of the best I've seen. It lights up the keys and also around them pretty well. Unfortunately, there's not a ton of things you can upgrade in this laptop, but you can flip it over, pop the feet off on the backside here and undo the screws in each corner, and you can replace the SSD. That's really it. Everything else is soldered on, including the RAM, which is unfortunate, but you also see a huge battery. This laptop has a 96 watt hour battery, which is amazing. On the front left and right edge, you'll find two very small speakers. They sound okay, but when you compare it to something premium like an XPX 15, they don't sound quite as good. The screen on this laptop is fantastic. It's bright enough, rated at around 400 nits. It looks like it's a little bit brighter from just using it. I use it at about 75% and that's perfect for pretty much any environment. It is glossy and it will take fingerprints if you touch it a lot, but that's any touchscreen laptop. It looks great for photo editing, video editing. It's very color accurate, so you shouldn't have any issues there. And you get the very fast response time that you do with OLED It's 60 Hertz but it is faster than a typical LCD simply by being an OLED model. So it actually handled gaming pretty well as well if that's something you wanted to do. 
Now this is a 16 by nine panel and I would love to see them extend it down to 16 by 10 and give you a little bit more screen real estate like the XPS 15 does. There's room there in that chin even though Dell has done a great job of keeping the bezels narrow on the top and bottom. You do have a webcam up top here and it does have Windows Hello support with IR. So that's really good since there is no fingerprint scanner. So from what I can tell right now, currently there are only two models on the market. Both of them have this 1080p screen and one has the 5900HX, the Ryzen 9 CPU, which is what I have here with 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte SSD. The other has the Ryzen 7 5800H and that is a slightly detuned lower version of this CPU as well as 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. So the $100 difference gets you a better CPU and more storage. That's actually not that bad, all things considered, but most people will probably be fine just getting the lower tier model and upgrading the SSD to whatever they want. The laptop comes with your typical assortment of pre-installed software. Two pieces that are actually really helpful would be the Radeon software for the onboard graphics. It lets you tweak color profiles and settings, that sort of thing. Actually very helpful. And also you get the ASUS Pro Creator Hub. And this is extremely helpful. It gives you access primarily to the power profiles, which are very important. First, you have whisper mode, which obviously is whisper. The fans will not spin up very much at all. And it, I found that it limited the CPU clocks to around 2.5, 2.7 ish gigahertz uh, when all cores are being hit. So the performance takes a big hit, but battery life increases and it's also whisper quiet. Essentially, the fans are not spinning up at all, no matter what you do. The balance mode, which is probably what most of you will stay in, spins the fans up when you're doing intensive workloads, but they never get too crazy loud. And it also lets the CPU pretty much go almost up to its peak performance, but not quite saving a little bit for the ultra performance mode or performance mode, which lets everything run full bore. Now, what I found was that the performance mode actually had a greater impact on the GPU scores than the CPU scores. The CPU was a little bit better, marginally better, but the GPU saw pretty significant gains when I ran some of the tests in 3D Mark. So overall, these are very good modes. Whisper and Balance are both fairly quiet and performance is reasonably loud, but I don't think that any of you really need to do anything more than the balance mode. I found that that was the best, most balanced, obviously, version of the laptop, and it gave you the great performance along with decent fan levels. And let's take a listen to the fan with those three modes now so you can get an idea of what it sounds like. Unlike a lot of the other thin and light laptops like the XPS 15, which I've had in the past, this laptop didn't get hit with any aggressive throttling while I was gaming. It was able to cool itself successfully. Temperatures were really good when doing rendering, obviously at idle or while gaming. It really handled it. The cooling system, while not super robust, does a good job with the components that are inside. In addition to strong and consistent performance, this machine also has really, really good battery life. So we've talked about that large 96 watt hour battery and the 5900X, which is notoriously pretty good on battery life. And that definitely is the case. With the YouTube video rundown test, I was getting around 10 and a half hours of video playback time. That's with downloading and that's at 70% brightness. I was also doing video editing, obviously, and I was seeing around five to six hours of time video editing. That's a pretty intensive task that does spin up the fans a little bit, gets the CPU and GPU going, and I was still getting five plus hours of work time in. So this is a great laptop. If you go to coffee shops, you're in on trains, you're in a place where you wanna do more intensive tasks, but you don't wanna always have to plug in, this is a really, really good option. So after testing the ZenBook out, I really do love it. I think it's a complete package. It's a great, great laptop for creators. And if you're a casual gamer, it's really good for that too. It handles both things very well, surprisingly. Um, I was pleasantly surprised with the performance, along with how thin and light it was, how good it looked, and how awesome that screen was. There are a few things I'd love to see. One, I would definitely want to add another USB Type-C port. I think that one USB-A, two Type-Cs, with power delivery on one of them would be ideal. So I could carry a USB charger for everything. I don't have to bring that brick around. I think that would be great. I'd also like to see a 16 by 10 screen that had at least 1440p resolution. 
like I said, I'll try and get the 4K model of this so we can do a comparison, see how much sharper it is. But overall, I think a 1440p 16 by 10 screen in here would be incredible. It would kind of make it maybe the best laptop for Windows there is. Um, and lastly, a second M.2 drive. I think that would be cool if you could add that like you can on the XPS 15. I know that this model is probably not going to be able to have the option for upgradable RAM. That's not as critical to me, but having that second SSD would be really fantastic. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Would you rather have this or an XPS 15? I do have both, so I could do a full comparison video. If you guys want to see that, let me know. I'll drop a link in the description for the laptop. Obviously, it only I can, I can only find it on uh, Best Buy and Newegg right now, and it is priced at $1,500, which is a really good bargain for the performance you're getting, the screen, all that stuff, a full aluminum chassis. It's it's really, really a good value. I'll be eager to see if they upgrade this, um, slight, some slight tweaks to the chassis as well, maybe like a bigger touchpad as well, and a larger screen to kind of bring it in line with some of their other laptops, and the new Ryzen processors. The 6900 HS is out now, I believe, on their G14, and should be coming out to a lot of other laptops as well. So hopefully we get some updates for this model later this year, but I think in the meantime, this is a tremendous value. It really is a great performer and I'm pleasantly pleased with it. So thanks for watching guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you liked the video. I'm Jay, I'll see you next time.